Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Talking About Birds, the only Cardinal podcast less likely to improve than Lance Lynn or Kyle Gibson. <laughs> my name is Nate Heininger, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Ben Samorka. Us, like them, are on the, on the back half of the career, the back half of their production. It's only downhill from here. Yeah. If you have an idea for the opening bit, tweet us at Talk About Birds. Hambone, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Let's tea get, gives, Nate. Happy tea gives. Um, might get some tea ravs on this tea gives. Oh, wow. That's, that's traditional. Yeah. Here at St. Louis, baby. Um, I, I I think the, <laughs> the people want to know you are famously at this point anti-holiday. Yeah anti-gathering yep. of people for celebration and fun. Um, where does Thanksgiving fall on your uh, hierarchy of of holidays? <laughs> I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I really don't. Um, it's fine. I, I don't think this hate of it. All of them. I was going to say this one, you know, it's all about like if you throw away what we pretend Thanksgiving is about yeah. and what and and focus on what it it's actually has become which is just yeah. an excuse to sit around and eat fattening foods like i i would have thought it would be pretty high on your ranking yes no i like the food aspect i like to yeah. eat of course mm -hmm. um i i have some uh, nostalgia around uh, sweet potatoes with sugar sure. uh caked on top of them and uh and and you know good smoked turkey which uh my buddy will be making or our friend gordo shout out gordo hmm. uh will be yeah. making uh this tea gives i'm going to make some sugar cookies uh so i can contribute okay. to the effort um but yeah I, I don't really care i like that it's you know we get a couple of days off work and sure. um you know for what i don't really understand but that's fine america <laughs> should have more holidays and business holidays in particular but uh yeah yeah, wow. I don't. Yeah, way to take a stand. <laughs> I, I really don't care. Uh, These are the causes yeah, yeah. that matter. Um, well, no, I, right. I, I don't want to get on a soapbox right now. But we're like, how many business ho like official holidays do we have compared to other countries? Like, uh, what is in the UK? You get mandatory. Is it six and a half weeks of holiday? And uh, yeah, here in the states, what if you get well, two weeks, you're you're lucky, or more, you're you're even more. Uh, it's 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 bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, work is dumb. Work is dumb. That's <laughs> why we do a podcast. Um, this is our work. So I guess it's dumb then. Shit. Yeah, it is. Um, or to argue. Yeah. Uh, your, where are you ranking your Thanksgiving foods? Like after you oh. filled your plate with ham, yeah. um, which we know is number one with a bullet. Yeah. Where are you? You got your plate of ham. What are you squeezing yeah. in the like nooks and crannies that are left on the space of your plate? Yeah, I so I'm a I'm a big um, uh, I, I I like to build the perfect bite uh, when okay. I when I'm at the tea gives table. So yeah. if it's ham or turkey, you know, grab some of that. I like to put a little bit of mashed potatoes on my fork. I like to put a little mm -hmm. bit of cranberry. Um, and if I can fit a little bit of stuffing and get that all in one fork, like I will meticulously build these bites. Cause I think that combo that like Thanksgiving sandwich on a fork that, that is yeah. what I'm here for. Um, but yeah, I love, I love the sweet potatoes. Um, I love just a good, like horseradishy mass mashed potato is, is always mm -hmm. one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, turkey or ham is good. I like the cranberry. Uh, I, I like it all. Um, I, I like food, uh, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm a big fan. What I like to do with the, the day after is that I'll get the cast iron pot or a mm. pan, like super hot and I'll throw mashed yeah. potatoes in there, turkey, a little bit of butter, get that all going and then just kind of eat it as this mash. Get I like yourself it. a stew going. Yeah. <laughs> I like it when they're all together. <laughs> um, yeah. you know, yeah, you know, you, you, you're making me think, you know, something that we don't really do in, uh, like in, in really any Western food that I think we should adopt, you know, when you get uh pho and they give you the big 
pho spoon that is like a, yeah. it's flat and it's wide. And what you're supposed to do is build a perfect bite with every every bite, and that's why Boom. that spoon is that way. Um, yeah, we need to adopt. I think as Americans, we need big flat spoons that we load up perfect bites on more often. Yeah, I'm thinking I, take the pho spoon. Get to do a base layer of mashed potatoes, some yep. turkey, some gravy, and just there you go. You're having yourself I, a good time. I don't think you've ever, ever said anything. I that honestly I think more this is the greatest with. idea. <laughs> I think yeah. this is the greatest idea I've ever had. Fully sold. Uh, if any of you are listening on Thanksgiving morning, which feels like an insane <laughs> thing to be doing, but thank you for listening. Um, try it out. Let us know. Uh, uh, email and us. Talk about birds on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, use a hashtag. Uh, gobble gobble, motherfucker. And let what us know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let us know. Yeah. Um, I'd love to hear how it goes. Yeah. But, uh, wow. Well, I, happy I guess I would too. Yeah. yeah. To you and to all of our listeners, to our United States listeners, to those abroad. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you as well. You know. What a time you know, to be thankful. If you're abroad, take the L. You suck. We rule. <laughs> this, is, this is an American holiday. <laughs> um, we have already spent too much time not talking about the actual cardinal news that we have. A lot of news about. this it, week, Nate. Been, a lot. It, yeah. It's been a, uh, it's been a, uh, the Cardinals said they were going to act fast this offseason. They were going to set a tone, they're going to set a pace. Uh, what tone they have set, I think we're going to have a lot of opinions on and we're going to discuss, but yeah. they cer- certainly have done that. But before we get into the big free agent signings, um, there's been a few coaching moves that we thought are interesting and worth discussing. You know, we've been lobbying for the Cardinals to go outside of the org <laughs> to bring in a <laughs> fresh face, a fresh voice, somebody who, you know, came up somewhere else. And I'm just so happy to get a chance to talk about how Daniel Descalso is returning to the team as a coach. Uh, yeah. Good to bring old dirty Dan back. We're, uh, we're slowly rebuilding the 2011 world series championship team uh, just on the coaching staff. So uh, joking aside, I, I mean, who doesn't like dirty Dan, right? It, you know, he, he was uh, uh, played an important role on some, imp- on, uh, on a very important era of Cardinal baseball, but it, it is, Continuing to crack me up that we just keep going and bringing back these guys. We're, we have not gotten a final answer on Yachty yet, but uh, we got yeah. Descalso in. What do you think of the of the well, signing? It, even the guy that he usurped, you know, Joe McEwing uh, will be taking an advisory role with the uh, GM's office. Yeah, with uh, up there with Gersh and Mo, um, and he was a former Cardinal. Yeah, uh, and I so I get it. I, I get what they're yeah. doing. Daniel yeah. can come in. He knows where the bathrooms are at spring it's training. It's important. We keep talking about that. It's important. These guys need that sort of assistance. They do. And they, they it's a person out. He's worked with, he has played with a majority of the stars. Uh, you know, he's played with the Cardinals, Colorado, Arizona, and Cubs, uh, meaning that he's played with a good chunk of the players who are now on the Cardinals in the big league. So I think it gives him a little bit of credibility. I think... Well, the move on its on its on its face is fine, right? Right. I think what we're seeing is that with if you uh, uh, calculate Daniel Descalso coming in, Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson, I think if you look like one step further, what we're finding out is that there's a serious problem with the clubhouse. There's a mm. a chemistry issue that is being perceived. Um, and why that exists, I don't exactly know. Of course, I think I'm like, I, I, you know, maybe my tinfoil hats on a little bit here, but like this to me seems like Daniel Descalso and Lance Lynn or like leadership moves, glue moves. There's something cancerous or negative going on in the clubhouse. And that is what this is telling me more than anything else. Um, yeah, maybe they're, maybe they're preemptively worried about the lack of Wainwright Pujols and Yachty, all three of those guys being gone now and they're, they're hedging their bets, but it seems to me like there's something else going on and the Cardinals are being, doing a good job of kind of keeping it quiet, but yeah, I'm getting at here. It's weird. Well, it, 
typically speaking, when when you hear those sorts of if if that's a concern, moves like this are also usually at least my perception of it is that they are presented as like veteran leadership, bringing yeah. in grit, bringing in hustle, those sorts of things. And, and who not, is who is more gritty gutty than Daniel Descalso? Well, you may not remember, but my nickname for him forever was Dirty the Clutch Daniel Descalso. <laughs> I do because <laughs> idiot. <laughs> yeah, that's stupid. Um but like that was part of his thing, right? Was that he was the you know, it's the it's the Skip Schumacher, the the David Eckstein, you know, yeah. the gritty guy who's going to give it. You know, they're not necessarily the most gifted, you know, naturally, but they work their ass off and they made it to the big leagues. You know, it's a it's a tale as old as time. Everybody loves it, right? Um, and then Lance Lynn is your big fiery guy who's going to get pissed and throw the ball real hard. And and uh, they both have both have also won a World Series as a St. Louis Cardinal. Right. I suspect there's like I don't think anybody on the Cardinals right now has won a World Series. Um. So um, like, um, there's or I guess Contreras. Contreras. Yes. Has. Yeah. Um. And I don't know, I'd have to run through everybody again, but I don't think anyone other than Contreras has. So I can imagine there's some desire to like bring in that leadership or that that like experience. Um, you hear that being valuable a lot. Like, I don't know. Sure. People talk about that being valuable. Um, so I guess I was saying is that like, if that's the case, if they are bringing these guys in partly for the glue element, then... They're not really talking like that. And maybe that's on purpose. Maybe they don't want to like highlight that as part of why they're being hired. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, last year was a shit show across the board. And <laughs> I can't imagine the season ended with a super happy gelled uh, uh, clubhouse, you know? So I mean, maybe they're just trying Aaron to get was. Yeah, Arenado was kind of, I, I think, signaling apathy to whether or not he was going to remain on the team post uh, All Star break or, or trade deadline. Like it, they're, yeah. they're, they're, you know, again, and we're we're reading through like nobody has outright said this, so it's it's speculation, you know. But um, I, I to the baseball side, I, you know, I think it's fine. Um, I don't think yeah. Daniel Descalso is going to detract from the team, but yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head on, on the open though. It's like. Why do they keep going back to the same well <laughs> for the past 15 years? Yeah. Um, find somebody else. Yeah. Find a dissenting opinion. And and I know Descalso, I, I say that now I'm thinking in his interview uh, upon it, he, he said that uh, uh, they're going there. He will argue with Ali Marmol. Mm -hmm. He will. Uh, he plans on having complicated baseball conversations, I think is how he phrased it. Um, yeah. But Willie, yeah. they're all speaking the same language. They came up in the minors together. They, they, everything they know, yeah. you know, is is going to be parroted. And uh, yeah, I do I mean, think that worth, he went. Him and Lynn did both go and play in other organizations for yeah. quite a while, you know. And Lynn hasn't been a Cardinal for what ten years now, yeah. and and has played on a bunch of competitive, um, you know, experienced teams. So there's to imagine that they're the exact same guy they were when they left the team is, is, uh, you know, unlikely. So it's not exactly the same as, as like what we've seen with like Marmol, who's literally never not been a Cardinal and right. Uh, you know, or like Schilt. the Matheny hiring and Schilt yeah. and all that. So it's a little bit different, but not a lot. Not so, a lot indeed. So, but I don't know, but we have been saying more coat. We, you know, they've been saying they want to expand the coaching staff. We have this, uh, and it's not like anyone was let go in order to fill this spot, at least not from my understanding. Um, and so this is an additional coach and McEwing is now an additional uh, person in the front office. And there's still the sort of like wide open yachty thing that's going on. Like that still it's getting pretty confusing, but you know, let's, uh, let's talk about the, the, the really big news, right? Yeah. The, the thing everybody's talking about, um, the Cardinals actually did, uh, you know, have acted on their word. They have said that they want to get some answers to what their offseason is going to look like early. Sure. And um, 
you know, I think we can pack it up. I think it's, I think we're done. I think we're good. And we're heading into 2024 uh, feeling pretty confident. We now have uh, Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson. Um, yeah. Let's, I'm trying to think about how to talk about this because I've got a, a range of emotions and I, I've not really even necessarily settled on I, <laughs> all of my feelings. So, yeah. It, it kind of makes sense to I me. Mean, let's take it like in order of of, <laughs> yeah. of what of when they happen, right? So first, we get the news of Lance Lynn, one year, ten million dollars with some sort of club option for twenty twenty five, and with um, the buyout, he's guaranteed eleven uh, for the first 11. year. Yeah. yeah, and I'll go first on this one. Um, I was reasonably happy with this signing. Um, you know, we've been saying like, there's going to be a back end volume guy. You know, I don't think either of us had really like picked Lynn as that option. I think, you know, you had last week we had discussed Maeda or Ryu or, you know, there's, there's like 20 guys out there that all sort of fit this bill and Lance Lynn, you know, he was pretty horrible last year, but he has a long track record and like, you know, I, I get there's some upside play here. If you're going in with Lance Lynn as your number five, like I, I kind of get it right. Like I, I was and you add in the, the history and the personality and the and the potential for strikeouts when he's on. And also, frankly, the Dodgers targeted him, targeted him last year. So I'm like, well, yeah. what did they see? Right. If they saw something, then then there must be something still there. So it all it's not really who I would have chosen for this sort of like, you know, bulk <laughs> back of the rotation guy, but I, I kind of liked it and maybe it's just cause I really like Lance Lynn, um, you know, and I'm, I'm biased there, but like I see the upside and the floor is not that horrible, even though there's some really scary numbers in there. Like I still think as long as he's healthy, we're probably going to get 160 to, a, to, to 190 reasonable innings. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's what we need. We need, like the Cardinals have said, they, we need volume. He should give volume. If the Cardinals offense is good. He actually had more quality starts last year than any Cardinal pitcher, yeah. you know? Well, we I'll, for- I'll get to that in a little bit, yeah. but yeah, that there's an argument to be made there. Yeah. We forget that a mid four ERA is actually a, can be a quality start in literally every one of your starts, right? Six right. innings, three earned runs is a 4.5 ERA. And so like, I don't know for, for what, for 10 million for the back of the rotation, I felt pretty good about this signing. Uh, what was your take on the Lance Lynn signing when it, like when it, we're trying to go in yeah. order of operations in, in the, here. in the, yeah. in the, the time, like the real time that it was happening. And yeah, I would say like, this is, this is in line with what Mo and co were kind of broadcasting to us. Um, he adds swing and miss. He's not a high strikeout guy, but he would be, he would have been the strikeout leader on the Cardinals easily. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, low bar he, to clear, but low bar to clear. Um, and that's also taking into account, you know, Jordan Montgomery leaving, um, like Jordan Montgomery, uh, likely would have taken that had he stayed with the Cardinals, yeah. but he didn't. So he didn't. Um, so he, he is, uh, he's familiar, great personality. Um, he's a bulk innings guy. He brings a little bit of swing and miss. He has added a, uh, he has leaned a bit more on a slider cutter type pitch in the last couple of years that has really added to his repertoire. Um, His curveball looks pretty good and and looked good at times last year. And I think that it is um, unlikely that he carries his home run fly ball rate uh, in from 23 into 24. He, uh, it's been widely publicized. He led the league in giving up homers. I think he gave up something like 44, I think coming, uh, uh, to the Cardinals in Bush stadium, that should just naturally even out. I yeah. think that you can also blame, um, to what degree, I don't know, but I think it is reasonable to assume that the white Sox were not getting all of the, um, pitcher meat off the bone. Um, and that just by being in a different organization with a different game plan and staff yes. that he's likely to improve. Um, now is he going to do, improve by 20% or, or 5% or it's going to be a Cy Young? You know, I don't know where that falls. It's, it's not going to be dramatic, but I, I think there's a reasonable expectation of improvement. 
Um, so I think all those things are fine. It's a low cost play option for next year. The Cardinals are in the driver's seat. This is a, uh, a kind of, uh, deal that you can dump, uh, if you yeah. need to. And it's a kind of deal that if the Cardinals are going the way that they went last year, that you can trade, um, you know, in June and get some quality pieces back for a team that's actually in the playoff race. So I, I think those things are good. Now, that being said, you know, there are guys like, uh, uh let's see, uh, Spencer Turnbull uh, could be, you know, out there for relatively cheap. Luis Severino, how much is he going to be? Uh, Frankie right. Montas throws mid ninety, mid to high nineties with a crazy sinker ball. Is he somebody that's worth taking a chance on? Uh, Wade Miley has had more success recently than Lance Lynn and is probably cheap and and widely available. We talked about Tyler Maley, uh, Kenta Maeda. There are other names out there that I think are probably around the same dollar amount that have a little more upside. And that's my disappointment on it is yeah. that the Cardinals went with a known quantity rather than taking a, a bet on Tyler Maley, uh, who we love his, his, uh, uh, his curveball spin and his strikeout potential. And he's younger by the way. So it, it, this one I, I was fine with There's sense to it. Also, like I do think Lynn coming back is just fun for fans. Um, you, you mm-hmm. gotta like that. One of my favorite Cardinals, especially, in his first stint, his personality and the winning that they did. Um, but yeah, my, my grade is that this is like a, a C plus B minus move. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, and what I, what I was saying a lot, you know, when this happened and then in the two days in between this and the next signing, um, you know, to me, the, the, we can really only truly judge the Lance Lynn signing in the broader context of, what other moves the Cardinals make throughout the rest of the off season. If Lance Lynn goes into the season as our number two or number three starter, like we're fucked. Yes. <laughs> um, and, but if he's your truly is your five or four, you know, however you want to sort of, uh, you know, compare him to like a Steven Matz or whatever, like everyone's gonna have their different arguments, but whether if he's the, if he's the last guy up in your rotation, then okay. Like, Great. I'm fine with it. Yeah, there might have been other more interesting plays, but it's fine. What we need to know is what else do the Cardinals do this offseason to to supplement Lance Lynn? Right. And uh, then they go and sign Kyle Gibson uh, on a one year, $12 million contract. And this is when I think a lot of us started to get worried. <laughs> And I think yeah. rightfully so. Now I'm not. I, I still, I still believe my take on Lynn applies to Gibson, and that like we truly can't judge these signings until we see what happens with the rest of the off season. But I will say that my uh, idea, my expectation of this off season was that we would be signing one guy like this. And everybody else that's coming into the rotation would be more of the upside, right? And not just the bulk inning eater type of role, right? And we know that the Cardinals have payroll flexibility. Um, we know that they have a pretty good gap in their budget and some some money to spend. But when you start to say we've now spent twenty two million dollars on. Uh, Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson, when you say when when the Phillies and I know it's a hometown discount, but they just got Aaron Nola for twenty four and a half. Yeah. You know, basically the same amount that we're spending on and Lance Lynn and projected Kyle to have double the pro- uh, uh, yeah. production in the next couple yeah. of years. Yeah. You start to get a little worried about where this is headed, but let's let's still try to. Like what, what is your take on Kyle Gibson, uh, as a yeah. St. Louis Cardinal? The, the number one thing about, about Kyle Gibson is that he has been, he has pitched 10 major league, uh, seasons. He has 294 starts in 10 major league seasons, it, essentially saying that he starts every fifth day, super durable. He shows up, he does not get injured. Um, and and that's his value add, right? He he's peaked in his career about three war. Um, he is a very average pitcher, um, but he is healthy and he shows up and he eats those innings, and, and that's what everyone's going to say about him. 
you know, I, I think that there's a lot of telling things of when the Minnesota Twins, uh, they had him for a while. And uh, the Minnesota Twins had a Cardinals shaped problem in the sense that they were not striking anyone out. They were they had the lowest strikeout rate rate in the bigs and kind of made their decision to flip that on its head. And then they went and got, you know, their entire starting rotation now. Uh, Mm -hmm. Who's their race? I can't think of Ryan. uh, 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 Joe Ryan. Joe Ryan. got Pablo Lopez. Pablo Lopez. Sonny Gray. uh, Yeah. And they moved away from guys like Kyle Gibson. Um, you know, very, very specifically shipped yeah. him out and brought some of those other names in. Um, Kyle Gibson is not going to win. He is not going to move the bar, but he is going to be there every fifth day, which is inherently a value add. I think, you know, we're talking about the Cardinals being insular and, uh, you know, Lance Lynn and Daniel Descalso. And, and I think Kyle Gibson is weirdly the same thing. I learned this this week. I'm not sure if you were aware of this, but Kyle Gibson is the vice president of Adam Wainwright's charity. Yes, I learned that as well. They are best friends. And I think that's <laughs> great. And I love yeah, Adam Wainwright. Great He's charity. an all-time Cardinal. And, yeah. uh, it, you know, it's great that Kyle Gibson is the type of guy that's going to be in competition for the Roberto Clemente Award. And he's doing all these great things. But it's essentially like bringing in a Cardinal who's never been a Cardinal. Yeah. Um, he has Wind been on a bird team. He was with Baltimore last year. So <laughs> yes, he's close. Um, but it is kind Support of like local it, bird team. Moselock said this, you know, I I'm signing players that want to be here and that's great. I'm happy that Kyle Gibson wants to be here. I'm happy that Lance Lynn wants to get here, but why don't you go get somebody like, go get somebody like <laughs> it, it makes it sound like they were calling him and he is like, well, that was easy. Fine. Yeah. Let's sign these two guys. They did all the work for me. Like, what do you? It... Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm complaining about this move. It also I don't know if I've said this yet, but it does not fit into the mold that Mosaic and, and the team said that they were aiming for. They were looking for swing and miss. Kyle Gibson is not swing or miss. Do you remember the game? Uh, when Kyle Gibson was pitching for the Phillies where the Cardinals hit four home runs back to back to back to back. <laughs> yes. That's, you know, and Kyle Gibson's better than that. That was a bad game. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's what he brings to the table. He is a dude. Yeah. My, yeah, I mean, it also needs to be mentioned. They're both <laughs> older than 35. Yeah. Like yeah. The, their best seasons are behind them. So yeah, we're not getting a Kyle Gibson breakout. No. Um, now, you know, uh, I, I'm in agreement, agreement with you on everything. I, and I'm trying to look through like, what is the, the positive lens on this? Like, yeah. you know, why, do, why does this make sense from a Cardinal standpoint? Yeah. And, you know, when you look at, uh, like even last year, Kyle Gibson, um, was worth 2.6, uh, fan graphs war which would have made him the second best pitcher on the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah. So first of all, this is an improvement. We hate it, but it is true. This is, this is, does make the rotation better. And if you think that the Cardinals are maybe trying to go for the mold, which you and I have talked a lot about of something like the Philadelphia Phillies of which he was a member of in 2021, um, then you really, you, you basically staff the back half of your rotation with guys that you think will get you six innings, ideally get near a quality start, and then you rely on your offense and your bullpen to really win the game for you. Yeah. Give up a few runs, home run here or there, but they go six or seven, the bullpen takes over, and you win five to three, five to four, six to five. You know, you yeah. win games that way. And then you hopefully have someone at the top of your rotation that's also winning you your two to ones, your three to ones, your your low scoring games as well. Right. And you're just building this like multiple different ways to win and volume and whatnot. I think the best way to illustrate what these moves have done on the positive side is, is to talk about how much the Cardinals actually need this. <laughs> and, and here's how I'm going to do that. Uh, okay. So Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson, I'm going off of their steamer projections um, for 2024. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Um, mm-hmm. But what we can, what the computer can assume that they're going to put up next year is a combined 62 starts, 
uh, about 360 innings of 4.33 ERA, which totals to 4.4 Fangraphs wins above replacement. Um, obviously, that's a lot of innings, which is good. There's not too much else to be super excited about there. It's nothing pops off the page. But then when you go look at the numbers uh, from the Cardinals, um, whose starters are on their way out, this is I'm specifically picking on Wainwright, Jack Flaherty, Dakota Hudson, Jake Woodford, and Drew Rahm. Those guys combined to make 69 starts for the Cardinals in 23, totaling 371 innings. So we're, it's 11 innings difference between those guys and mm-hmm. two new guys. Their season numbers totaled to a 5.91 ERA. They combined for 0.8 Fangraphs war um, and 15.6% K rate and almost a, a almost a 10% walk rate. Yeah. Um, and, what, so, and what does that cost? Probably you had 18 for Wayno. What was it? Probably eight or so for uh flarity yep. yeah and then four, you know four or five mid- for dakota four or five for dakota so probably around 30 million for the for that whole group give or take yep. some uh so so when you look at those that's stark right you're basically going from nothing actually worse than nothing with a 5.91 yeah. era it's really hard to come back when you're six <laughs> runs down yeah or even five um you're not you're not striking guys out you're walking a ton of people um those guys did provide bulk innings which is good Um, But as you can see, just in the projections, like even if uh, Lynn and Gibson kind of walk the line, if they don't improve at all, if they go right down the lane, the middle, um, it's going to be a massive swing for the Cardinals as far as production. I mean, you know, it's it's four point four wins. So let's say that's at five wins added to the win total, but also the uh, the ability to uh, soak up innings from those relievers, the fact that these are only coming from two spots on the roster rather than five, um, and the benefits that it's going to be doing for your bullpen, giving them more time. You, you, let's say that this, this move just going from these two players, Gibson and Lynn away from those other players, let's say it's a a six win, um, uh, kind of swing for the Cardinals. If all things are taken into account and they, they hit their projections. So that alone is great. Like you could, any MLB team, if you could say, hey, you you can spend $23 million for a six-win swing, every team in the league does that. Yeah. Except 100%. for the A's. Except for the A's. Yeah, 100%. Because w- what we say before, uh, right now, the the cost of a, of one win above replacement is somewhere around 8 to $10 million. So right. this could arguably be, like you said, a six-win swing for, for 22. It is the most boring, least upsidey way to do it. <laughs> but like we have to assume there is some logical, clear thinking coming from from Mazalak and, and crew around this signing. Uh, and so like the, I, I imagine those numbers are, are a really good way to illustrate like like just how bad we were a place we were in and how even something as boring as this is an improvement. And I but I still feel like like these two signings, we we still can't fully judge it until we have the broader context of what happens this season. And I'm probably not going to be happy with it if I don't think any Cardinal fan is going to be particularly happy with it. If we go into this season with Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson penciled in as you're like guaranteed, these are our number three and number four starters this season yeah. or our, even our number four and number five. What I'm really hoping is that they really do believe that this is a volume play sort of thing. And maybe we're going to get a third guy that is exactly like this sort of range. And then we'll also go and get a top line guy and a middle guy and just say, we now have six or seven starters that we think can give us 180 big league innings and we'll play the hot hand. And, you know, maybe Lance Lynn ends up back in the bullpen. Uh, Maybe Kyle Gibson becomes a long man in the bullpen. Like, I, I think if these guys truly are starters in the rotation for the entire season, we're probably in a rough spot again. Well, as much. but I don't know. I, I, I see what you're saying. I, I'll disagree with you a little bit. If they are the fourth and fifth, I'm fine with that. If the Cardinals go out, because they still have some money, they yeah. can go sign Yoshi Yamamoto, mm-hmm. um, you know, for 25, 30 a year or whatever it is. 
and then still trade for Dylan Cease. I right. still think they knew it needed two headed monster. But if if your rotation is two um, like number one, number two level guys at the top and then three inning eaters, which are Miles, uh, Lynn and Gibson. I'm fine with that. That's yeah, uh, we can roll with that. Those guys are going to, like you said, they're, they're going to eat up a ton of innings. They're going to save the bullpen. We got two guys that can win the tough games at the top. I'm fine there. Um, that yeah. obviously slides mats into the bullpen, which I think we saw made a lot of sense last year. Uh, and then that gives people like Thompson Libertor, uh, some flexibility, maybe to take a spot start to work out of the bullpen, to go back to AAA, whatever it might be. Um, yeah. but and I, we also I, might I, see Roby and, uh, hints start yeah. to you know hopefully if their minor league seasons go the way we want them to they start to knock on the door a little bit yeah. for some of those starts as well but right now the depth chart is miles kyle lance <laughs> yeah. um one two three if those are three four five i'm okay okay outside I'm, of that yeah i'm not <laughs> yeah <laughs> really well not. yeah oh yeah for sure if if they are two three four it's it's gonna be it's gonna be rough. Um, yeah, but yeah, I think we can't over overstate the um the the bullpen piece of this whole thing. Like the Cardinals should have a really good bullpen again, and they did last year until they had to pitch five innings a game. And so, like keeping that bullpen fresh and letting them pitch in their designated spots, that has value. That's really hard to calculate, and yeah. that's that is part of what this is supposed to do. So. There is a question that is going around too that I don't have a, a like I don't really know what my thoughts are on this, but I'm interested to hear your take, which is why these guys so quickly? Why these two as like really I mean Nola signed, but that's a its own thing. We're gonna talk yeah. about that in a minute. And then really the next two starters off the board out of this huge free agent class. There's a massive amount of starters of every range are available. And the Cardinals jump at Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson on deals that I don't think you would call a like like a good deal. It's not like they fell into their laps at five million a year or something. These are like competitive contracts, you know. Twelve it's, million for Kyle Gibson feels like a lot. It's almost as if the Cardinals front office is evaluating pitchers differently than. 27 other teams in baseball. Yeah. It's almost like they're speaking two different languages yeah. and the Cardinals are prioritizing things that the majority of the league is not prioritizing. The Dodgers are a team with a ton of money and should be good next year. They have a lot of pitching, pitching openings and they didn't get the, these guys. Um, yeah. The Mets are in the same boat. They have a lot of money. The Cubs in the same boat. Why didn't these guys, they go out there. And I really think it comes down to, uh, it was cheap. They called them, the, uh, the players called the Cardinals and Moselak got it done. I think if I, if I want to give uh, Mo a little bit of credit, I'm sure that this helps him negotiating to some degree, uh, for a trade. Hey, I really want to get Dylan Cease. We don't need him. We got bulk innings. We're, we're, we're covered. So I'm not giving you you know, the keys to the castle. That That's the only thing I can really yeah, think is that, that it that's gives him a bit. little bit more. I also, yeah. I think they got burnt last year. I think they yeah. felt like they were behind the eight ball last year. Um, but really like, like I'm not even trying to just be a jerk to Mo and team. It's like, what are you guys evaluating that nobody else is evaluating? What are you yeah. looking at? Cause it's the wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> Cause like just straight down the line, it's the wrong thing. You, you could go get a Lynn in three months or yeah. two months, you know, wh wh whatever the, the appropriate timing is, you can go get that shape of player, um, for probably less. Like you mentioned, the fact that they both broke 10 is kind of crazy. Um, mm -hmm. I get maybe the club option helped them out a little bit because the Cardinals can't control the future, you know, to a certain degree, but are either of these guys options going to be triggered? Um, probably not. Uh yeah, probably not. I mean, ho hopefully, because that means they had a good season. Like, I, I do believe that there's still a potential upside for Lance Lynn, which is funny because he got the the lower contract, not by a lot, but he got the lower one. I think he yeah. has. There is this like bounce back element to him. Kyle Gibson has just been doing what Kyle Gibson does for 10 years now. We're not, yeah. you know, his ceiling is two and a half war, I think, going yeah. into next year. Um, you know, 
Lynn has had a near seven war season. He was four and a half only two seasons ago. Like there is this return to some degree of, of, you know, well above average. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, I guess I'm hopeful that like Lynn really, uh, you know, returns and has a great season. I think he's, he is the type of guy that can have these little late thirties, you know, good seasons. Um, and my guess is these team options are also the sort of break glass sort of thing. Like, if this whole season collapses again and we're in the same boat as we are, if we're in the same boat next year, they don't have to do this sort of shopping again, assuming yeah. that Lynn and Gibson do what they were hired to do. And the failure comes from somewhere else on the team. They can just be like, we'll just take these right. options and we'll start over with these guys and we'll go and do whatever, you know, whatever yeah. other options. And, and isn't that a hunk of shit though? There's like no sense of urgency. There is yeah. no sense of understanding from the outside looking in that you have two Hall of Famers on your corners right now and you should push yeah. the chips in to try to win because yeah. when are you going to have Arenado and Goldie on the corners yeah. again? I mean, you know? it very likely there's a, a distinct possibility this is the last year, right? Yeah. Like, I think we all want the Cardinals to extend Goldie, but we've heard nothing about that. We don't know what Goldie wants. We don't know what the Cardinals want. They might be envisioning Jordan Walker at first base in 2025. Maybe, uh, maybe they want to make a play for uh, Vladdy Guerrero Jr. here soon and, yeah, uh, and that, move away yeah. from Goldschmidt. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I bet that's what the Cardinals <laughs> are thinking of doing. Going in, uh, yeah, signing yeah, a again, guy like that. It, it, th these moves, like, they lack creativity. Um, they lack urgency. Um, I, I agree. I think you mentioned this a little while ago, but like, I really spending like Aaron Nola money on these two guys. Yeah. Is that the smart play? Couldn't you yeah. go get replacement level pitchers almost anywhere? Like I know that pitching, uh, starting pitching is the hardest position to fill, right? Of course. Yeah. But if you're just going to look at, if you're the bar that you're looking for is league average, you can find those guys. I mean, Zach yeah. Thompson might be a league average pitcher right now. Now, I'm not saying right. the Cardinals should make a bet on that, but I would much prefer the bet of going and get Aaron Nola and then making the bet on Zach Thompson because at least you have that four win player at the top of the rotation. Right. Um, it's well, that's the thing that we still don't know, though, because like we've said, like this offseason does feel very different. These signings feel very different. If the Cardinals go and get Snell or Yamamoto, I mean, I, the, the, the Cardinals are hinting kind of in a annoyingly cutesy way that they are going after Yamamoto. Yeah. Um, so be I do believe not to. Yeah. I do believe that they are making a, a, a sincere push, but um, you know, when has the, have the card, the Cardinals have never won in this situation except for like Matt holiday. Um, so I'm not necessarily the most confident that they'll get it done. Like, not just the money, but if all the money is roughly the same, why is Yamamoto picking the Cardinals over the Dodgers or the Yankees or the yeah. Mets or the Cubs? Um, of course, there's the newt aspect, which we're all we're all rooting for. We're doing some newt rooting right now because he seems to be our best uh, our best uh, chance at actually convincing this guy that St. Louis is the team you want to go play for. Um, but anyway, so let's just say they 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 do get Yamamoto or more likely they get like a Blake Snell or a Sonny Gray. And then they do trade for a Tyler glass now or a Dylan cease. And then maybe they do still go and get another guy like this. They get a Waka or whatever. I think our conver our conversation around the Gibson and the Lance Lynn and all of that just feels very different. And yeah. it, it adds a whole new context to it. Um, just like last year, Will uh, Wilson Contreras, in a vacuum, great signing. The The Cardinals needed a catcher. They went and got the best one on the market, and we felt really good about it. But that's all they did. So ultimately, the Wilson Contreras signing feels disappointing in the broader context of that offseason, right? If this ends up being some of the two biggest contracts they give out this year, it's horrible. Yes. If, it's, if they're supplemental pieces, that it doesn't really matter if they individually do what we hired them to do, but rather the bulk of people who we get to fill this role ultimately accomplish that goal, then I think we'll be happy with it. Yeah. So 
I guess like Mo ended his uh, press conference uh, earlier, pretty frustrated it seemed, and basically like asked everybody for patience because nobody is fucking responding to these signings very well. <laughs> I think for you know, unsurprisingly, <sighs> and he's asked for patience, and I do get that because really nothing, no, nothing has happened in this off season yet. These no. if these exact signings did happen in February we'd feel different about him too, you know? So, yeah. So I'm willing to give that patience still. I'm not feeling great about this direction, um, but we still just don't know. Like Mo has pulled off. Like the one thing he has shown aptitude at, I don't want to hear about Randy or is arena. The one thing he has shown aptitude at generally is pulling off big time trades that nobody saw coming. Sure. Right. And so we don't know what they're working on. We don't know what tricks he has up his sleeve. There's a world where we still get some interesting, good starters who sit atop that rotation. And Lynn and Gibson and Michaelis and all these guys are the inning eaters. And hopefully the offense and the bullpen are enough to, to outweigh that. We're yeah. a positive, optimistic podcast most of the time. And I'm choosing to choose yes. optimism in this moment. Um, but I will definitely be pissed if, if this ends up being... Uh, if we go in with Lance Lynn starting in the home opening series well, <laughs> next year, it's, it's again, the timing of it, Nathan, yeah. it's why yeah. not go, you, you have your 40, $50 million. Why don't take that bag out and shop around for the high end guys and tell Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson, Hey, before you sign anywhere else, let us know, let's keep this conversation going. Yeah. Why is it? Why is this the priority? Yeah. Um, I, and, I mean, uh, we do and know Mo they doesn't got, deserve like yeah. Mo deserves criticism for that. That's it's yeah. silly. Yeah. Yeah. We do know that as, as you call out, like they, they basically got left behind last off season. I don't know what the hell they were working on, but they basically said like, well, we, we try, we had a bunch of different ideas for starters. And, and by time we got to it, like they were all gone. And so I'm guessing that their thought was like, we know we like these guys. We know they fit what we're looking for. So let's just get it done so we don't have to worry about this in February and March when everyone else is scooping up these guys. We're already done with that. Yeah. We also know that they like to be fast in the offseason. We've seen it for years now. They are usually done with the offseason like by January. And so it, it, they're... <laughs> I I, that's oh, not it's so frustrating. I know, I know. That might not necessarily be a good thing, but it is their vibe, right? They don't like to it go is. into february and march with with uh spots still on the uh it, on the roster if the if they had the reputation for getting their guy annually then it'd be like <laughs> yeah that's right they show up to the table and they Get put their money where their mouth yeah. is but they don't yeah yeah so well yeah, but yeah, you're right the, the yeah. same thing with matt's the same thing with Contreras. um yeah they get yeah. it they they do it quick so Ugh. okay all right let's move on um I think a, a bit of good news. Um, we were all uh, kind of unhappy or sad when uh, when Vilking Rodriguez was, uh, you know, was was non tendered. Um, they have brought him back on a minor league contract. So that's great. Um, I, I'm I'm excited about that. He seems like a, a good potential arm. I do think it's interesting. There, there's obviously something, some red flag across the industry yeah. on Wilking because he went through every, you know, the, the Yankees had a shot at him. He's gone through wave. Like he, he's, well, he's been available to everyone multiple times at this point. And he, he has just a, keeps he going back to Cardinals. Yeah. Yeah. He, you know, if there's any team that's familiar with what's going on with him, it's Cardinals. Um, but the guy isn't thrown. So why, you know, if you have no data on him, you haven't seen him throw in a year. Why, why take a chance on him? But yeah, I think it's great. He still has potential. Him and uh, 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 Zuniga, you know, maybe adding a bunch of K's to the bullpen this year will be a lot of fun. Hopefully it works out that way. Yeah. Um, I also, uh, we, we have finally, we have an answer to a debate that you and I have agreed on a hun the entire time, but we talk about it all the time as if it's a debate. But we finally have an answer and Ben, we fucking nailed it. We were right. Uh -huh. And That's I don't right. like, I don't mean to rub it. You know, he seems like a great guy, captain of the team, captain of the, one of the worst teams in Cardinal history, uh, <laughs> future Andrew, Cardinal manager future. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, Andrew Kisner was DFA'd. 
Yeah. We thank um, him for his time. Great backup. But it was time. It was the right time. We made that argument enough already. So we're not going to kick a man while he's down. But it did happen. And I, for one, am very excited to see the Cardinals put full support again behind Yvonne Herrera. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know what more this dude could have done last year to prove that he was ready for a more primary opportunity at the big league level. Now he's still going to be splitting or he, you know, he's going to be on the short end of a platoon with Wilson Contreras, but we know Contreras is not a 140 game starter at the catcher position. So we should get a fair amount of time to see, uh, him at the, at the big league level. And I'm really excited about it. Like this is one of those unknown upside things that 2024 will be really interesting to see how Herrera yeah. develops. You would also think that Herrera is probably going to be pulling some starts, uh, against, uh, at DH against right-handed, uh, or sorry, left-handed, uh, pitchers. Uh, yeah. he, he's got a good bat tool. We'll see if the Cardinals are afraid to start both their catchers at the same time. Um, but <laughs> I could see it making a lot of sense to, you know, you bench, uh, Gorman that day, um, you, you put out, uh, Donovan at second Wilson's catching and Herrera's hitting DH and, you know, maybe he picks up another 20 or so starts, uh, via that. But uh, no, I think it makes a ton of sense. Hand starting to hand the reins over to the kid and his, uh, his offensive performance last year was undeniable. So you, you kind of have yeah. to make this move. Yeah. And I, I'm excited again. This is one of those unknowns that we can go into 2024 feeling uh, I I have some hope about this. Like it should be yeah, fun to see him. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, Dakota Hudson DFA. We it was a little bit surprising, but uh, we also kind of saw that coming. Um, Jake Woodford DFA saw that coming. Um, you know, there was a lot of surprise around the fans when this when these were announced. But like, uh, yeah, I think they made a lot of sense. It's something yeah. that we were. They kind of did everything that we were hoping they would do from a DFA standpoint, which is nice. It did signal a little bit. At least they recognized that. Now, of course, going and getting Gibson and Lynn, you're like, was is it really that much of a difference between them and Dakota Hudson? But but or Jake Woodford? It is. But, it is. You know, it, it is. I know it is. But uh, so. Um, and I think the only thing else to talk about in this Cardinal section, I wanted to. I, you've got it here, too. Interested to get your take on the Brandon Woodruff situation. So yeah. if you're not, if you somehow, if you miss this, if you're listening and you miss this, Brandon Woodruff was uh, DFA'd by the Milwaukee Brewers on its surface, like an incredibly surprising move. Uh, he's been one of the best pitchers in baseball for, for quite a while now, but he actually he has a shoulder issue. He's owed $11 million this year. There is some uncertainty as to whether he will pitch at all in 2024, and if he does, it will likely be near the end of the season. So I think, you know, the Dodgers wouldn't have done this because that $11 million means nothing to them. The Mets mean that would, wouldn't have done it because it means nothing to them. But a team like the Brewers, who we both think are probably approaching rebuild anyway, they've chosen to uh, save the $11 million and, and DFA him. So now yeah. there's this this sort of wild card pitcher on the market that no one was really anticipating. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on Brandon Woodruff as a, as a potential Cardinal option? Yeah. I mean, I, I think it makes all of the sense, especially if you take the Brandon Woodruff timeline in concert with the Kyle Gibson and Lance Lim timeline <laughs> timeline, yeah. you know, you, you sign this guy, he probably only wants to take a two or three year deal. Maybe he takes right. a th uh, two year deal with an uh, option, a player option for the third year, something really short so he can kind of reestablish himself. Um, but we talked about this in the bird score. It'd be very similar to when the Cardinals acquired Chris Carpenter after he had a torn labrum with the Blue Jays. Uh, I was looking up the contract details. They brought him in for essentially league mi minimum, let him rehab and then re-signed him once he was healthy to a, a more real contract. And obviously baseball was different back then and contracts were different back then. Yeah. But I think it would make um, a million percent chance to do this with Brandon Woodruff. I think that he is yeah. a guy who is going to age well. Um, I think that you can probably get him at a pretty reasonable price because of his injury history this year and the years previous. Um, but this is the kind of low risk, uh, high reward move. I think the Cardinals should absolutely make, and maybe it's, uh, 
you know, it's a two year deal worth 11 million, let's say, and you pay him league minimum this year, he can get rehabbed, get fresh. Maybe there's a couple of escalators. You pay him like 500 grand per start. If he can start, I'm just pulling that out of my butt. I don't know what sure. the escalators look like. Um, but you know, to incentivize there are stairs that back. move up and down, usually in Thank malls you. and things like that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but let's say what, what escalators the- look like. That's really good. What if what if the Cardinals are decent this year and you get a Brandon Woodruff for the last two months of the season and he comes back yeah. healthy? Like, what does that look like? And then you get him for the year uh, for twenty twenty five, um, and you're starting to look really hairy. And and you know maybe there's extension talks, but yeah, I, honestly, I think any team that is even sort of in a competitive window to not do this would be stupid. Um, yeah. So you know, hopefully the Cardinals can show up a little bit, but the, I I. Uh, would be shocked if something positive like this happened because <laughs> just, it's I just know. Not- we're all we're all so beaten down at this point um yeah everything you just said i agree with and is exactly why i don't think it's going to happen because it makes sense for literally every single team like yeah. even teams that don't think they're going to compete this year almost every team sees themselves competing in the next year or two yeah and every one of those except for the oakland athletics of course um every other team thinks they're going to win the world series in the next three years. And so like this is, this just makes a perfect sense and it's going to be whichever team is willing to, to do the highest risk, uh, as a, as a dollar amount. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, the he'll have a lot have of never been that. Yeah. No, no, they haven't. The, I, I think like the Mets are going to pay him more than you'd expect or something like that. And yeah. they'll just float a year at whatever cost and just be ready next year with him. Or like you said, there is a chance that he comes back and pitches this year. So like if you see yourself as a playoff team this year, like, yeah, imagine how powerful that would be to have Brandon Woodruff, uh, maybe as your number three or four starter in the, uh, in the playoffs, like be huge. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really want the Cardinals to pursue this. I am not, uh, I, I am not hopeful though. Um, cause <laughs> again, I think everybody is probably talking to Brandon Wood- Woodruff right now. Yeah, they should be. I, I, the, yeah, you, you already mentioned it, but the, uh, uh, the Brewers rebuild is, is coming and it's, it's going to be sad for those Brewers fans who like never really had it come together when they had a really yeah. solid team there for a couple of years. Yeah. I think, you know, next year that they will still compete. Freddie Peralta seemed to have really like broken out last year and taken that step everyone was expecting and they still have Corbin Burns. So they still do have that like top two sort of thing, but, um, you know, Their offense right? is so yeah. bad, though. Yeah, a- unless Cheerio comes up like this year and is is the monster everyone thinks he's going to be, I just don't I don't see it. Or they go and sign like a Bellinger and someone else, but yeah, it just doesn't seem likely. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Unless the the Cardinals truly have some crazy moves come out over this off season, I think we're going to see the Cubs as everyone's prediction to win the Central, and then the Brewers and or Cardinals after that, depending on how yeah. each team handles. So Cubs might get Otani. I know. I mean that it, it just makes all the sense in the world and it sucks. I yeah, hate it. it. It'd be yeah. nice for us to be able to watch him, you know, good. Number yeah, of sure. Here. That's, it'd be nice to watch him just crush the Cardinals over and over. <laughs> every time we go to Wrigley, he's going to hit four home runs. Uh, Can you imagine yeah. him hitting in Wrigley. It's going to suck. He'll love it. Yeah. All right. Anything else Cardinal related you want to talk about before we go to the break and and talk about the rest of the league? No, sign Yamamoto. Yeah, uh, I think the nude factor is real. Um, yeah, I hope so. But uh, yeah, sign Yamamoto. That would really shut me up. Yeah, yeah. Just just do it. All right. Um, well, we want to talk about the rest of the league a little bit, but before we do, we want to remind everyone that this show is listener supported on Patreon. If you've enjoyed the show and you want to show your support for the time and effort that goes into making it, bringing it to you every week, consider joining our Patreon, patreon.com slash talking about birds. Patrons at any level get access to our private Discord server. It's the bird Discord. It's been popping lately. It's been a really nice place to talk through some of these moves and vent some frustration and try to understand the, the Cardinals' uh, perspective here. And just a, it's, it's a nicer place than going on like Twitter and just speaking into the void and hoping someone responds. Like, we're there. Other people are there. It's a like great my place tweets, like my tweets. Um, we all want to get off Twitter anyway. Um, also, patrons at the Adam Wainwright level and above uh, get one of our brand new shirts. 
You can find our shirts on our website, talkingaboutbirds.com. Uh, we've got fun shirts that we think you'll all like. Great Christmas gifts. Wow. Christmas wow. season is upon us. Um, and it's a pretty good deal. If you're thinking about buying one of the shirts, joining the Patreon, you get a free shirt. And it's like multiple months of the Patreon. Uh, so, yeah. uh, you know, you, it's sort of a win-win, right? Uh, so check it out. Patreon.com slash talk slash talking about birds. If you want to support the show in another way, consider leaving us a review on your favorite podcast platform. It does help. And also tell your friends, tell your family today, right now. I know you're sitting at a table, you're eating turkey and you have your headphones in and you're listening to me. First of all, I'm sorry. Anti-social um, weirdo. Yeah. Take your headphones off and just start screaming. Listen to talking <laughs> about birds. Okay. It'll help. Put down the potatoes, pick up your mm. megaphone, start screaming. I enjoy talking about birds. Yeah. If you want to hand them an easy place to follow us online, Ben, why don't you talk to our dear potato filled listener yeah. right now? Yeah. I, if you want to hand them a place to follow us online, <laughs> <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter at talk about birds. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at Talking About Birds. Uh, you can listen to this show on Spotify if you prefer that. Rate and review us there as well. We got a TikTok. Come look at our faces on TikTok. You can email us questions, uh, Thanksgiving recipes, whatever Ooh. you want to talk about birds at gmail.com. And you can find all of that information, t-shirts, podcasts, all that bullshit at talkingaboutbirds.com. Again, that's talking about birds. Dot com. Come home. Dot com. Come home. Join the revolution and come home. <laughs> All right. We are. We are. The off season is flying. There's plenty to talk about. Um, let's run through some of these moves that have happened in the last week. Wowie wee wow, Nate. Wow. Quite a bit. Uh, yeah. The final manager opening uh, that was with the Padres. There's been a lot of manager movement this Early off season, Mike Schilt, former Cardinal legend, is yes. now piloting the Padres, uh, which I think is a pretty smart move. I, I do think uh, the Padres' job is not the most desirable thing right now. I think AJ Preller is kind of a lunatic, uh, especially to run somebody like Bob Melvin out of there. Uh, yeah. But I think this is a great opportunity to Mike Schilt prove that he is a good manager. I bet he is going to tighten up the Padres. I bet their defense is going to be tight. Their fundamentals are going to be tight. And maybe he can get people like uh, Xander Bogarts and uh, Manny Machado and uh, Fernando uh, Tatis Jr. to all get along and pull the yeah. same direction and and play together. But I think this is probably going to be a, a, a very nice signing for the Padres. Yeah. I mean, we like Schilt and, yeah. and still don't fully know what happened and and what his misalignment with the St. Louis Cardinals was. Um, you know, there's, there was enough reporting. We don't need to rehash all that, but ultimately we like Mike Schilt and, um, there's, it seemed like maybe there'd been some other things going on and he was not going to return to a management role. And, uh, it's good to see him get this opportunity. So I think this will be an interesting test. Yes. You know, like when, when Matheny got fired, we were, we, it all made sense. And then he got the Royals job and then he got fired from the Royals and I was like, okay, it's not just us. It's yeah. like he he just wasn't cutting it as a big league manager. This will be interesting to see how Schilt does. And it, I, I'm happy for him to get this shot. Yeah. Um, yeah, fully agree. Uh, this happened right before we started recording today on Wednesday. Uh, but the World Series losers, Diamondbacks. Losers. Uh, <laughs> Nothing acquired. worse than that. No. No, I, I'd much rather win 70 games than <laughs> yeah. just sit on my ass. Yeah. Um, the D-backs have acquired a Eugenio Suarez, a uh, third baseman from the Mariners for reliever Carlos Vargas and Sebi Savala. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a pretty low-level trade. I think it makes a lot of sense. I actually thought the Diamondbacks were going to go try to get Matt Chapman. Uh, yeah. I thought that that made a lot of sense for a lot of reasons, but I think a pretty smart move. And, uh, I bet you a Eugenio hits 40 plus bombs in Arizona with the down yeah. with the, the thin air. Um, and, uh, I think, uh, uh, we talked about this before the podcast started. I think Sebi is a underrated defensive, uh, uh, catcher. I think that'll be a nice little ad for the, uh, for the Mariners. Yeah. Or, uh, and 
Yeah. And uh I get my teams mixed up. And for the Diamondbacks, like a Eugenio kind of underrated, you know, yeah. like for a while, it looked like he was just going to be one of those dudes who hits a lot of home runs, but doesn't do anything else. You know, you're sort of Kyle Schwarber's, but he's not bad defensively and no. he's put up three plus war or like, so 3.2 last year, 4.1 before that 2021 was a bad year for him. Um, and then 4.2, 4.3, 3.9, you know, he's had five, six years at the big leagues of being yep. well above average. And yeah, in that Diamondbacks park with some of those, like having him behind Corbin Carroll and Cattell Marte, like, you know, you can see him getting a lot of uh, run scoring opportunities and yep. hitting a lot of home home runs in, in their park. So Absolutely. It, and it doesn't seem like a high cost either, especially... No. Zavala, you know, now they've got Moreno. And so, like, they're pretty locked in at catcher. That's a depth piece that they could move. I think it's going to be a pretty good deal for the Diamondbacks. Yeah. I mean, like you said, for a guy that could make, uh, like, mess around and have, like, a, make an all star roster, not as a starter, but as a, a bench guy or, you know, something like yeah. that, it's pretty, pretty low. A backup catcher and a reliever is pretty, pretty low. Yeah. Ask for that. Yeah. Diamondbacks are good. They run well. Hmm. Sounds nice. Must be nice. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Going from a well-run team to a poorly run team, the White Sox are in agreement with free agent shortstop Paul DeYoung uh, on a major league contract. Yeah. I... uh, it is kind of odd to me. I think this speaks to how bad the clubhouse chemistry was that they just let Tim Anderson go and then they sign... Paul, Paul DeYoung, Young. who is yeah. arguably one of the best free agent shortstops this class, which is insane to say, but yeah. like, ugh. especially after the last year, it's pretty wild. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, good for DeYoung. I wasn't sure if he was going to get a contract after, you know, kind of bounce around last year and never really sticking with anyone. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think if I were building a team, I'd take the upside play of Tim Anderson over you. We kind of know what you're getting with Paul DeYoung at this point and what you're getting is likely not great. Much love to Paul DeYoung. Um, But I think when we were talking about him last year, we kept saying he's going to go and be a great shortstop for the Pittsburgh Pirates or something like that. And we're pretty close, pretty close, pretty close in ending up with the White Sox. Yeah, he could hit some dingers there. Yeah, he'll he'll probably get 500 at bats because they have no other options. So yeah, yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. Maybe he uh, he'll figure it out. Maybe he'll be a little more flexible with his approach and and everything. But uh, yeah, maybe yeah. G- good for you, Paul Ad. It's good to have you in the league still. Um, all right, now a slew of Braves moves that I'll I'll try to run through. Uh, they have signed former White Sox Reynaldo Lopez for three years and thirty million dollars, um, which I thought was a pretty fascinating move. He had a nice year. Yeah. Uh, as a reliever last year with the with the White Sox and uh, Angels, but uh, kind of crazy. I'm ex- I'm was surprised to see that big of a commitment. Mm-hmm. And what's also crazy is the Braves have said that they're going to stretch him out and try him out as a starter. Um, and you know they have the flexibility to kind of bounce him back. You know whatever works out. But kind of an interesting move uh, and creative move, I think, from the Braves. Yeah, I mean, they've got the money to spend, you know, all of their very good players they have for very cheap and they don't have a lot of holes on their team. So they can, no, they don't, you know, so they're just trying to uh, plus up that bullpen. We'll talk about another move here in a moment. And uh, it makes sense. And yeah, stretching him out like I get it. That's what he came in the league as trying to be a starter. It didn't really work. Ended up in the bullpen. Maybe they maybe they saw something. Maybe they know what the problem is. Uh, if anyone can do it, probably them over the White Sox. So we're probably all we're probably all going to be super pissed at this move in like yeah. eight months. Uh, and another uh, I'll t- two other trades that the Braves ended up making. They made a trade with the Royals. They swapped Kyle Wright, uh, which is kind of crazy, but he is injured for Jackson Kowar. Uh, Jackson Kowar going to the Braves. Kyle Wright going to the Royals. Uh, the Braves also made a trade with the White Sox for Aaron Bummer. Um, and the White Sox received five players, Mike Soroka, which again, kind of crazy that Kyle Wright and Mike Soroka are just being tossed to the side by the Braves, Mm -hmm. Jared Schuster, uh, infielders, Nicky Lopez and Braden Shoemake and a minor league righty named Riley Goins. Um, what's really fascinating to me about this is that I think that we can assume Reynaldo Lopez is going to be pretty solid. Jackson Kowar is a, a bit of a question mark. Aaron Bummer, I think, is super solid. Yeah. But the Braves has have also cleared like 
five, no, seven or eight spots off their 40 man um, and improved their bullpen and gotten kind of some, I don't want to call Mike Soroka or Kyle Wright fat, but they kind of cut some fat off the, yeah, you know, uh, off the roster there just because these guys are injured. But um, very curious to see what they do next. I, I thought this was one of those trades that when you first see it, you're like, what the fuck did the Braves just do? Yeah. Um, you know, look at all those guys. Those are some names that people know. Uh-huh. And they got a left handed reliever. But then when you really start picking into it, you're like, well, Mike Soroka really hasn't pitched that much. And when he has, it hasn't it hasn't gone well for several years now. Jared Schuster is whatever. He's a guy. Nicky Lopez hasn't really been a guy. Like, like you a know, defensive that name. first shortstop. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's like, oh, they really didn't give up. Like there's a potential for the Soroka bounce back. You know, you got to give some value to get value. But they really didn't give up that much. And they got one of the better left-handed relievers in the game. Yeah. And it's like, damn it, Braves. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Their bullpen is going yeah. to be stacked next year. Yes. Yeah. Um, so good luck, everyone else. Uh, there's a, a couple of fish making moves. The Marlins announced the acquisition of a couple of former fish. superstar prospect Vidal Brujan. Um and right-hander Calvin Fouchner, Fouch, Foucher, Foucher. Uh, from the Rays. Miami is sending back Eric Lara, uh, Andrew Lindsay, and a player to be named le- later. I think the really the real reason I want to talk about this is because I was kind of Vidal, uh, Vidal Bruhan guy. I think that yeah. he, I, I mean, he was one of the better prospects in baseball. Speed glove guy, probably going to develop power at some point. But the Rays are moving on from him, and the Marlins are kind of you know, playing the same drum. They're going for speed, defense, contact. And I think it's, you know, especially yeah. with um, uh, the former uh, GM of the um, of the Rays going to Miami, like obviously he went out and wanted to get Vidal Bruhan. So yeah, still a believer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's curious to see this move. I think it's pretty interesting, but uh, we'll see what happens. And I'd like to see Bruhan uh, uh, bounce yeah. out a little bit. That'd be cool. Yeah, he was a very exciting prospect. So hopefully yeah. he can bring it back together. Uh, Shoda, I cannot say this guy's last name. Shoda Iman, Im, Imanaga, Im, Iman, Imanaga, yeah. Imanaga, man, Imanaga. Shoda Imanaga, uh, is expected to be posted on Monday, uh, after the holiday. We didn't talk about him earlier, but I think that if the Cardinals wanted to do something and get like, uh, Snell and Imanaga or a, a Imanaga and Yamamoto, Something like that. I, I think that yeah. this guy is going to be affordable. I don't think he's going to be a ace by any means, but a a potential two or three yeah. in a rotation and a guy who, you know, he's 30 years old. Um, he's probably not going to cost all that much, but uh, I don't know. Somebody who I think the Cardinals should be in on him who, who will probably get a lot of attention. Yeah. Yeah, well, we we did cover him a little bit on an episode a few weeks ago yeah. as as a potential target, and I still feel that way. Like I put him right there in the same camp as your Sunny Grays, you know, these guys yeah. that like we think should be really good, but they have some risk with them as well. Um, so I'd be really happy with Imanaga. Uh, again, it all depends on the broader context, but like <sighs> in a vacuum, he makes yeah. a lot of sense for the Cardinals. Totally. Um, and in other baseball news, uh, the Paris series, which we talked about with our buddy Akira a, a while mm-hmm. back and the p- potential of that has been canceled due to the, uh, due to being unable to find a suitable promoter in, uh, they should have us. I would have promoted call- it. We could have done it. Put that yeah. thing together. I got a lot of connects in Paris. Oh um, yeah. So anyways, that's not going to happen. Uh, it looks like there will be another London series. Uh, and then I'm putting forth, I think MLB should focus on the Netherlands and have mm. a uh, some type of series happen there. Um, I say that because they've had a league since 1922. There is baseball culture there. Um, yeah. And I also, I did not know this, but I was fascinated by this. The professional baseball league in the Netherlands is called Honkball Hoofdklas. <laughs> um, and I just love that. It just means Major League Baseball. Um, but Honkball Hooft Klaas is uh, what a, a, a yeah. much better name. What a Oompa Loompa sounding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can give me on some Honkball. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I I would prefer our national yeah. pastime to be Honkball than baseball. Yeah. Baseball's kind of played out at this point. 
Oh man, we we are we are so stupid just making fun of a different language, but it is <laughs> it is fun. Hong you know Kong. what? Don't have such a goofy ass language, and I want to. That's make a great fun point. Of it. It's on them. Also, you know what? Netherlands, they're fine. Aren't they like the happiest, richest people in the world? They're fine. If uh, yeah, we can make fun of their language. They'll be okay. They'll be okay. They need to be brought down a peg or two. In fact, it's about who time. do they think they are? Yeah, more Lars like Newt Bar. Get in there. Netherlands, more like Neverlands. I'm not going there. And that wraps up my league news. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, yeah, so uh, it's been quite the off season, tons going on, and uh, I'm excited to be able to end this episode with a, a little game that I call, uh-oh, <laughs> I didn't even get to do my bit this time. Usually you set it up better than that. <laughs> I, was, I had a whole thing. Uh-huh. Did you hit the All button right. too early? No, I don't control this. Okay. What button? Well, I think you know what we got to do, man. <sighs> yep. We got to feed the card shark. All right. Um, here he comes. Got to let the copyright music play a little bit longer. I want Steven Spielberg <laughs> to sue us. <laughs> it's so good, though. He'd be John the Williams. one, right? He'd be the one yeah. that we get the email from. Yeah. Yeah. All Steven right. Steven dot Spielberg at films dot com. It's probably Spielberg dot com, don't you think? Probably. He, Probably yeah, Jaws.com. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ben. I've got I've got something new here for us. I got I got some fresh packs. Yeah. Have um, you been using old packs? Yeah, I had a whole bunch of like the series one 2023 oh. cards. Okay. And this is the Tops update series. Oh. Which I think comes out near came out either right at the end of the season or at the end of the season. I'm I'm not Howie, super wee wow. Yeah, so this pack has 14 cards in it. I'm going to open it here on camera. <laughs> there you go. Wow. All right, so... Some good uh, ASMR work there. Yeah, thank you. So the way this game works is I've got a pack of cards here. I just opened it, and I got I'm going... Yes, I do. I got a pack. How about you? Wow. That was good. Thank you. Um, I'm banned for whatever bullshit you're doing right now. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the first card was really shiny and I got distracted. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay, so here's how this works. I'm going to read the player's name and you have to tell me what team they play on okay. and what position they are, uh, what position they play. Or... What is it? I get eaten by the card shark. Is that what happens? Yeah, you get eaten by the card shark. We I have to chomped. feed the card shark. Okay. This makes sense. No, it's good. This game is fun and makes sense. It's good. Okay. So let's get started. This first card, it's shiny. This is a tough one. Matt Olson. Matt Olson, first baseman, Atlanta Braves, led the league this. in homers. It's kind of a lame photo. Yeah. But uh, the shine is cool. I and you dropped it. it. <laughs> Dumbass. All right. Got another shiny one here. Charizard. It is Charizard. Mason Inglert. Whoa. <laughs> that is a hard name to say. And somebody I've never heard of. Mason Inglert. Um, uh, he, he's probably an A because I don't know any of the A's players. Uh, infielder, uh, I'll, I'll say second baseman, uh, Oakland A's. Uh, no, he is a pitcher for the Detroit Tigers. Ah, I also had never heard him, but he apparently pitched, uh, in 22. Oh, he's still in the minors. Okay. So oh, he's a pitcher for the, the Detroit Tigers. Look at that shiny though. That oh, nice? he did have a cup of coffee though. Okay. So this is the update series. I guess we can get anybody. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, he pitched right. 56 innings in 2023. Uh, Carlos Vargas. Oh, uh, oh, I think that he used to be a Mariner, and now he's a Diamondback, if, I, uh, if my reporting was correct earlier, and he's a relief pitcher. That's correct. He's a, uh, uh, But it's the other way around. 
he went from the Diamondbacks. Oh, sorry, he was was a Mariner. He's now a Diamondback. Sorry, no, he is. He was a Diamondback. He was. <laughs> oh my he god! He said no, yes. and then he said yeah. this. This yeah. section is going so great. Um, <laughs> but yes, it's funny. Look how Carl Vargas? Yeah. 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 <laughs> what are the odds? Um. All right. Oh my god! This is this is crazy. Jared Schuster. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, he is now a White Sox. Used to be a Brave. Yeah, you got it. Wow. Jared Back-to-back guys who were just traded. And that we talked weird. about we t- like five three seconds ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. Very weird. All right. Uh, let's see. Jackson Kowar next. Yeah, right. Um, all right. Hobie Harris. Hobie? Um, did you see the new, uh, Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse? No, not yet. Although I watched, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, uh, like two nights ago. Have you seen that? I have not. It's awesome. If like, if you like, they clearly were like, oh, Spider-Verse was awesome. Let's do that with the Ninja Turtles. But it's different enough that it's, I, I really don't think it's a ripoff, but it has, it has like the whole hip hop thing and like, you know, it's, it's got a it's got a really cool vibe, but I love the whole it, hip hop thing. And I recommend you check it out, but I'm, I'm very behind on like every movie. So, uh, no, I've not seen the new, uh, spider verse two is good. There's a spider man yeah. called Hobie. It's good. okay. Well, how about um, Hobie Harris? Hobie Harris. I think that he is a, I've heard of this guy. I might be getting him confused with somebody named Kobe or Colby. Um, I think he's a giant and I think he's a middle infielder, but, uh, it's probably wrong. Wrong and wrong. Hobie Harris is a pitcher for the Washington Nationals. Pitcher. Okay. I was thinking, I'm, I'm thinking of somebody on the Giants. Anyways, that sucks. I think, he's wearing this, I think he's wearing the City Connect jersey on that one. Love it. All right. Matt Mervis. Matt Mervis. Bunch of alliteration here. Yeah, that name Hobie also Harris sounds familiar. Mervis. Um, Mervis, Mervis, Mervis. I, man, is my, my brain isn't working. I want to say he's a Mariner. Um, and I want to say that he is a reliever, but I, uh, I don't feel confident at all. Incorrect. I thought you might know this one. He is a first baseman for the Chicago Cubs. So he oh, was one of their, crap. he was one, one of their top, power guy. Yeah, yeah. He was one of their top prospects this year and I, he, I, he did get come up, but he yep. really struggled. No, I should have known that one. I, I, as yeah. soon as you said it, it all came flooding yeah. back. But once I said what it is, you knew what it was. <laughs> Uh, if things were different i would have had a different answer all right uh we're getting to this rowan wick rowan wick uh is he still a cub i think he's still a cub uh reliever for the cubbies you got it former cardinal former Former catcher catcher for the cardinals yep all right uh mason miller there's how many masons are in the league right now it's a very it was a very popular name uh, in like the early 2000s for kids Apparently, and, um, and the late 90s. Mason Miller. There's so many good Millers up. Um, there's good Millers for the Dodgers. There's good Millers for the Mariners. Mason Miller. Mason Miller. Um, crap. I cannot remember. Uh, I'm going to go starting pitcher. He's not on the Dodgers, is he? Um. Uh, I don't know why that's where my brain's going. I'm going to go Mason Miller starting pitcher Dodgers. You're probably thinking of Bobby Miller, who Damn is it. a uh, starter for the Dodgers. Uh, there's also have... a Bryce Miller. Who's Br- Bryce yeah. Miller's the uh, Seattle Braves? or maybe it's Braves. Yeah. Uh, Too many Mason Millers. Miller is a starting pitcher for the Oakland athletics. Now Not really he, I dropped it again. He, uh, he came up. He's one of those guys who they flew through the minors. I think he started last year at single a, and he can throw over 100 miles per hour. And they brought him up, and he was incredible. And then he got hurt and missed almost the entire rest of the season. Sounds like the year of 2023. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. No, yeah, I don't know this guy. Uh, but yeah, he sounds yeah, good. He, uh, he might be like, if the athletics are good in the next few years, it will be partly because of Mason Miller. My God, All right. He has like career 60 or 70 innings. Yeah, like he he was in single A at the beginning of the year, and he made his major league debut. It's like a Jordan Hicks. It's one of those guys where they're just like, there's not much more we need to do with him. We just have to see if it plays at the big league level or not. Yeah, impressive. 
Um, but he also is hurt all the time because you, the human body shouldn't do what he does. All right. Uh, Steven Strasburg. Steven. Str- oh, sad story. Sorry, yeah. pitcher Washington Nationals. Yep. Retired. Yep. Um, Kevin Kelly. Kevin Kelly. Um, God, there are too many baseball guys. Yeah, there are too many baseball guys. Kevin Kelly. I've never heard that name. Uh, Instead of league expansion, we should do league reduction. We should. It's too many, too many boys out there. Um, I'll say Kevin Kelly is a sounds like a Pittsburgh pirate to me for some reason. I'll say he's a Pittsburgh pirate relief pitcher. Well, he's a pitcher for the Rays. Yeah, never so. heard of him. Yep. Um, this updated uh, batch is really. I, uh, I know they. They. I actually kind of like it because it's a bunch of dudes who you wouldn't maybe expect to get like cards in a big pack like this, but um, it also has made this way harder. A lot of the packs we've done is like all people you know. Um, um, yeah, these are all like it's been the guys I don't know are guys that have like twenty innings. In yeah. The yeah. Uh, Tanner Bybee, uh, Bibby. Um, Bibby. he is a guardian, right? He's starting pitcher for the guardian. He kind of had a great year, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, they continue their ability to just churn out these effective starting pitchers. I don't think the Cardinals should trade for Shane Bieber. Yeah, I don't either. I'm not, I am not a believer. I'm not a Bieber believer in 2024. So agreed. Um, That'd be a waste of resources. I think you could trade for someone else. Uh, Matt Reynolds. Matt Reynolds is. <laughs> this is a tricky. This is a confusing one. Because aren't there two Matt Reynolds? Well, there's Mark Reynolds. Mark Reynolds. Who, who we who we remember. Yes. Famous but isn't Cardinal. there a position player, Matt Reynolds, and a. I don't know. A, I've a got one of them in my hand. Name Matt Reynolds. I don't so know. One of them throws really hard. One of them is a. Um, I'm going to go relief pitcher. Um, I think he's a diamond back, but I don't, again, don't feel confident. I have Matt Reynolds, the second baseman for the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah. Isn't there a, I'm, I'm going to look it up while we're chatting. So, oh, okay. There was a Matt Reynolds who is now retired, who was a pitcher, um, for a handful of teams. But gotcha. he's been retired since 2016, so that yeah, no, that's a that's an L for for Benny okay. Boy. Um, finally, he was a Rocky. That's why he was. Oh, in there you go. Finally, Michael Stefanik. Michael Stefanik. Um, like Gwen Stefani with a C at the end, and Michael instead of Gwen. Yeah, uh, another loser. Never heard of him. I think I have heard of him. I just cannot play some. Uh, I'm going to say he's a. Uh, starting pitcher for the White Sox, second baseman for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, um, there is one last card here, and it's Acuna and Orlando Arcia hugging. So that's oh, cute. That's pretty good. Yeah, Michael Stefanik. Yeah, it's a 27 year old who played. He had 60 at bats last year. Man, uh, you kind of got screwed on this pack. You really you a, did. You got like um, a bunch. It's like a bunch of like 25 yeah. to 28 year olds with very limited time <laughs> out of 28 possible points. You got what looks like 12. Yeah. So that, uh, that sounds I'm right. Pretty sure you just got eaten by the card shark. Yeah. 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 Take me. Eat Here me, daddy. <laughs> Eat me, daddy. <laughs> And with that, we are going to wrap up this week's episode. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you for listening, as always. Talkingaboutbirds.com for all your social media and Patreon and T-shirt needs. Check it out. We'll be back next week. Um, I don't know. Maybe there'll be some more action. Hopefully, we get a more fun and exciting Cardinal uh, bit of news. Um, But either way, we'll be back. So thank you again for everyone for listening. And until next week. Go Lars Newbar convincing Yamamoto to come to St. Louis. Hooft class.
Sebi Zavala has transitioned teams. I like Zebi. Akil Badu. Akil Badu. Has murdered a schoolboy. Badu, 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 Dadu. <laughs> you think he ever sings that entering into a town? I imagine that is the yeah. only thing that exists in his internal monologue. Yeah. Beep, bop, Same. Badu, 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 Badu. 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 Badu, Badu, Badu.